Here we'll solve some equations involving radicals. Just like with any equation, we want to undo the operations that are happening to the x variable. And we want to undo them in reverse PEMDAS order. So radicals and exponents, they don't get undone until after additions and subtractions. So for this first one, a, I'm going to undo the subtraction here first. So let's add 6 to both sides of the equation. That'll help us get x alone, but x won't be totally alone yet, of course. We've got this. Now we want to undo the radical at this point. And just like the inverse of a square is square root, the inverse of square root is a square. And that's what this statement says here. It says that if we have one side of an equation equal to another, then we're going to be allowed to raise both sides of the equation to any exponent of our choice. And in this situation, the best thing to choose would be to square both sides. So I'm going to put a square here and a square there. The square will cancel the square root. They're inverse operations. So they'll go away. And we'll be left with x minus 2 equals 36. We can now take that final step of adding the 2. It's like the 2 was in parentheses here when it was uh, surrounded by the radical. So that's why we couldn't undo that until after we undid the radical. Uh, now we'll have x equals 38. We'll want to just check our solution, make sure that it checks. So let's see, uh, to check it, we can do radical 38 minus 2 minus 6 and see if that equals 0. That would be radical 36 minus 6 equals 0. 6 minus 6 is 0. It checks. Let's try this next one, which has a cubed root happening to it. The way we undo a cubed root is we often want to think about how could we get rid of a one-third power. So if we rewrite the radical as a rational exponent here, a fractional exponent, then we could think about what do we raise this to in order to cancel the one-third. Always keeping in mind that we have that multiplication of exponents rule. So whatever we put here is going to end up being multiplied by the other. And we want them to cancel. So raising it to a power of 3 is actually the right choice. And we just want to do that to both sides. Cubed root and the cube cancel off. We'll get x plus 2 equals negative 27. Subtract 2, and we find that x is negative 29. Will this check? Let's see. We want to do a cube root of negative 29 plus 2 and see if that is negative 3. So we're talking about the cube root of negative 27 equaling negative 3. And that's actually true. Uh, negative 3 times itself times itself does make negative 27. So it checks. All right, this one's a little bit more complicated here. We've got two radicals separated by addition. We can still square both sides, but what we're going to have to do is square the entire side, which will mean that some kind of foiling is going to have to be done. And we could leave the radical x where it is, or if we wish, we may want to move it to the other side. Whatever you think will give you the best, easiest route to the answer here. If we move the radical x to the other side, it may be a little bit easier to foil this. 
Now, why do I say we have to FOIL it? Because we're going to square the left side, and we have to square the right side too. And that's going to require putting parentheses around those two terms, and that means they're going to have to be FOILed because it's going to be the thing times itself. And hopefully, uh, if it all works out, we'll get a nice result out of this. Uh, the square root and the square will cancel, so we'll just have 2x minus 1 over here. All right, so we'll do our firsts. That's going to be 4. Our outers is negative 2 radical x. The inners is also negative 2 radical x. And the lasts will be plus radical x squared, which is actually just x. OK, let's see if we can combine some things. we'll have 2x minus 1 equals 4 minus 4 radical x plus x. So we'll subtract the x here. And we can add the 1 to both sides. We'll get x equals 5 minus 4 radical x. Now we may wish to get all the terms onto the same side. So I'm going to move the 4 radical x over to the left. We'll get x plus 4 radical x. And we'll move the 5 over to the left as well. We'll have that. Now we want to recognize this as similar to a quadratic equation. Now why do I say that? Because in a quadratic equation you typically have a squared variable and then a single variable and a constant. And we basically have a very similar situation. x is the square of the square root of x. And so if we did a substitution letting a squared equal x, then this could transform into a quadratic equation. Uh, what we want to do now is try to do either factoring on it, or we could try to do the quadratic formula on it as well. So I think that factoring would work really well for this. In this situation, our first terms, though, would be a square root of x. Our lasts are going to be 1 and 5. And I believe we'll want to do plus 5 minus 1. And those would be the factors to use. So at that point, we can use the zero factor law radical x plus 5 equals 0 or radical x minus 1 is 0 solve them so radical x equals negative 5 or radical x equals 1 we can square both sides so it looks like x is going to be 25, or x is 1. Now we definitely want to check those solutions and see if they're valid, so let's do a check for each one. 2 times 25 minus 1 plus radical 25 equals 2. All right, so we would have here 50 minus 1, which is 49. Nice perfect square there. 
We have that. So is it true that seven plus five makes two? No. So this one actually doesn't check. Okay, let's try the other one. Plug in a one for X. See if we get better results for this one. Two minus one makes one. Nice, perfect square. And yeah, it checks two equals two. So that means that X equals one is a solution to the equation, but X equals 25 does not check. It's not a solution. Try D here for yourself using the same techniques that I had used over here, and then I'll do it as well in a moment. All right, we'd like to solve this equation involving radicals. And we'd like to do it by squaring both sides of the equation. It would likely not be the most efficient way to do it in the form that it's in right now. It may actually be better to separate these radicals on opposite sides of the equation. You can try different ways. For yourself and see like what is most efficient for you but I believe just that this may work out a little bit easier separating them and now I'm going to try to square both sides of the equation that'll help me get rid of the radical on the left but unfortunately on the right we're going to have to foil when we square this thing all right, let's see how it works. So you got x minus one equals five minus radical x plus four. We wanna now introduce a square to both sides. That means putting parentheses around the entire side because the entire side is being squared here. So we gotta square the entire side here to make it even. The radical here will cancel with the square, which is great. But over here, we're going to have to do FOIL because it's going to be that thing times itself. All right, so let's try our firsts. That's going to be 25. We'll do the outers which is minus five radical x plus four. Let's try the inners, which is also minus five radical x plus four. And then we'll do the lasts. And negative radical x plus four times negative radical x plus four is actually just gonna make x plus four because it's the square root of the thing times the square root of the thing. Result will be that thing that was under the radical. Okay, we'll try to simplify where we can. So it's good not to do too much at once. You just do one change at a time, you're a lot less likely to make mistakes. So it's something I recommend. All I did was I combined these like terms. Next, I'm going to try to move the x's, but I see an interesting thing happens here. They're going to actually cancel each other out. And that's good. It helps to make it simpler. That's for sure.
Okay, we want to get the x alone. So let's try getting rid of the numbers. Get the numbers that are near it away from it. Like this addition of 25. We'll undo that. And we can also undo this 4 over here on both sides. So we want negative 1 minus 4 minus 25. That's going to take us to negative 30. And we'll have that. All right, let's divide by negative 10. And that's going to give us 3 equals radical x plus 4. We're going to need to square the thing once again. So that'll cancel off our radical here. We'll get 9 equals x plus 4. Then after we subtract, we reveal what we think the solution to be. We think it's 5, but just to be sure, we have to check it. All right, so just on the side here, we'll do radical 5 minus 1 plus radical 5 plus 4 and see if that equals 5. This is a check. All right, here we'll have radical 4 plus radical 9. Nice, perfect squares there. 2 plus 3 equals 5. It does check. So we must have the solution then. x equals 5.